Healing is the Secret to Recap Chapter 1, we discussed the law and its operation. We discussed how it is that we are Trinity humans. We are triune humans insofar as we are one but made up of three. Neville calls the one of who we are our consciousness. But this consciousness has three aspects. The first aspect being the conscious, which is Rodin's The Thinker. You know, this famous piece of art, The Thinker. This is the aspect of us that dreams, that has visions, that thinks thoughts, and then also has intentions. This is also considered the male aspect of who it is that we are. And then there is the subconscious, the female aspect of who it is that we are. She receives the intention and she creates it. Neville Goddard calls the subconscious the womb of creation, and like a woman brings forth life, so too does the subconscious bring forth the life of your intention, but only if you employ the third part or the third aspect of your full consciousness, and that is feeling. Feeling is another way of saying frequency. It is the vibration that you hold within yourself as you dream, as you have visions, as you have intentions. The feeling must match the vision in order for the subconscious, which is the womb, to receive the seed of that and then bring it into manifestation. Everything we need to create anything exists within us. And we learned about that in chapter one the law and its operation. It's powerful because so many of us think that that mechanism or the mechanics of manifestation and creation, those exist outside of us. God is the creator or saints are the ones that are the creators or this is not something that I'm intrinsically part of, but that's not true. Neville and all the great sages, I dare say, have always pointed us to our inner divinity. Now in chapter two, we kind of switched gears a little bit and we talked about sleep. And the reason Neville wanted to talk about this is because sleep is the domain of the subconscious. If you want to change the outpictured reality, meaning what it is you're experiencing in 3D life, well, then you've got to change what the subconscious is receiving. And if we go directly into the playground of the subconscious, which is the domain when we are asleep, that's when we can truly work with our intentions and signal or transmit to the subconscious to manifest our desires and we do so without getting our getting in our own way so we discuss sleep and how important it is tonight in chapters three and four we are going to be moving on from sleep into prayer which is what neville calls a state akin to sleep and many followers of goddard call sats S-A-T-S. When I say get into sats, what I mean is get into a state akin to sleep. We could also call this the receiver position or a state of meditation when we are in that neutrality, that passivity, where our walls fall down and we are able to work more deeply with the subconscious. That's sats. And prayer happens in sats. And the final chapter, which is spirit and feeling. Prayer, like sleep, is also an entrance into the subconscious. Quote, When you pray, enter into your closet, and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. Prayer is an illusion of sleep which diminishes the impression of the outer world and renders the mind more receptive to suggestion from within. The mind in prayer is in a state of relaxation and receptivity akin to the feeling attained just before dropping off to sleep. So we talked about hypnagogia during sleep, that trance-like state that we enter into right before we fall to sleep, and also right when we're starting to wake up, very drowsy. Again, this is a trance-like state that puts you incredibly proximate to the subconscious. Prayer is not the full immersion into hypnagogia typically, but it's a state that's like that. It's a state of profound relaxation when those walls fall away. Neville says, prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. Please let me say that again. Prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. Quote, 
whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, believe that you've received them, and you shall have them. The only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. So it's not about the prayer to have more money. It's not about your prayer to meet your true love. It's about the state that you're in when you're asking for what it is that you desire. If you're in a state or a frequency or a belief vibration that already believes you have what it is that you ask for, you will receive it. That's a universal guarantee. Again, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you've received them and you shall have them. The only condition required, Neville says, is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. Your prayer has to be answered if you assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective. The objective is another way of saying that thing that you want. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds means for its realization. To pray successfully, then, you must yield to the wish, that is, feel the wish as being fulfilled. The perfectly disciplined man is always in tune with the wish as an accomplished fact, meaning is always attuned to the reality that he is already that, she already has that, is that, is in possession of that. He knows that consciousness is the one and only reality, that ideas and feelings are facts of consciousness, and that they're as real as objects in space. Therefore, he never entertains a feeling which does not contribute to his happiness. For feelings are the causes of the actions and the circumstances of his life. One more time to underscore, therefore... He never entertains a feeling which does not contribute to his happiness, also to his vision, also to his goals. For feelings are the causes of the actions and the circumstances of his life. Now, Goddard has touched upon this previously, hasn't he? He said that it's normal to feel things and it's normal for us to feel pain and anger, which can be of a lower vibration, certainly as compared to source energy or creator energy. It's normal though to feel that, but we don't indulge it. We don't hang out there. That's when pain transforms to suffering. Suffering is just pain that we're choosing to be in and to stay in. A disciplined man always fine tunes himself according to what he desires to manifest. He always feels things that contribute to his happiness. Are you feeling things that contribute to your happiness? All day, every day, are you thinking about how you're vibrating and whether that's actually contributing to what you're trying to create? That's where we need to get. On the other hand, Neville says, the undisciplined man finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses and usually accepts or rejects solely on the appearances of the senses. Now let me break that down for you. When Goddard says the undisciplined man finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses, he's saying that an undisciplined man believes what the senses are telling him. The senses are the conditions of your life. The senses are the facts as you see them externally not existing within you. The number on your bank account, the job that you go to every single day that you do not like. Your senses tell you that's your reality. As opposed to the disciplined man who turns away from those conditions and those experiences, those senses, and points his interest back within to the kingdom of heaven where he creates his reality. Because of this tendency of the undisciplined man to rely on the evidence of the senses, what life is showing him, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray, before attempting to feel that which they deny. This is why you have to get into sats. This is why you have to get into a state akin to sleep, because this effectively shuts down what the senses are constantly projecting to you as reality. When you turn away from that, get into the receiver position and point your interest inwardly or towards your vision and your frequency, 
you deny what the senses tell you is quote unquote real. Whenever you are in the state of mind, I should like to, but I cannot. The harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. You never attract that which you want, but always attract that which you are conscious of being. Once again, you never attract what you want. That's not how it works. You always attract who you are conscious of being or according to who you are conscious of being. So the question is, who are you conscious of being? Are you conscious of being divine? Are you conscious of being lovable and loved? Are you conscious of being worthy? Are you conscious of being prosperous? Are you conscious of being creative and inspired? Is that how you're vibrating? Or are you conscious of that which you do not have? Are you conscious of your lack? Are you conscious of your anxiety? Are you conscious of your unworthiness and your unlovability? How are you spending your time in your interior world? You never attract what you want, but always attract that which you are conscious of being. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. When the senses confirm the absence of your wish, all conscious effort to counteract this suggestion is futile and tends to intensify the suggestion. Again, because this is a little convoluted. When the senses confirm, in other words, when your life confirms the absence of what it is that you want or what it is that you want to manifest, all your conscious effort or your efforting to counteract act this suggestion is futile and tends to intensify the suggestion. Prayer is the art of yielding to the wish, not efforting, not forcing the wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will always be the victor. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself, meaning the dominant feeling always wins. The subconscious receives the dominant feeling. When you're feeling something that's in conflict with what it is you're trying to manifest, the feeling is always going to be the victor. Always. In attempting to fix an attitude of mind, which is denied by the senses, effort is futile and also fatal. So for those of us out here trying to manifest, working hard to manifest this goal, Think about that energy, working to manifest, working hard to manifest, spending all your time trying to figure out how to crack this case. That is low vibrational energy. Working hard is hard energy. Neville is saying we have to yield to the prayer. We have to yield to the wish. We, in effect, surrender to the flow of how manifestation works. When we effort, we get in the way of what the subconscious knows how to do. When we try really hard, we block the universe from doing what the universe knows how to do. Instead, we have to simply assume the energy of the wish fulfilled. Just run that energy and everything else works in concert to supply it to us. Amen. And so it is. To yield successfully to the wish as an accomplished fact, you must create a passive state. A kind of reverie or meditative reflection similar to the feeling which precedes sleep. Sats. In such a relaxed state, the mind is turned from the objective world and easily senses the reality of a subjective state. So when you're relaxed, when you're in meditation, when you're opened up, it's easier to turn away from what reality says is real and it's easier to turn towards subjective reality, which again, this is the domain of the creator, the subconscious. It is a state in which you are conscious and also quite able to move or to open your eyes, but you have no desire to do so. An easy way to create this passive state is to relax in a comfortable chair or on a bed. If on a bed, lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body, close your eyes, and imagine that you're sleepy. Feel, I am sleepy. 
so sleepy, so very sleepy. Get yourself into that space. In a little while, Goddard says, a faraway feeling accompanied by a general lassitude and loss of all desire to move will envelop you. You feel a pleasant, comfortable rest and are not inclined to alter your position, although under other circumstances, you might not be comfortable. When this passive state is reached, imagine that you have realized your wish. Not how it was realized, but simply the wish fulfilled. Again, don't get in the way. Just imagine that you have it, you are that. And the universe takes care of the rest. Imagine in picture form, which is another way of saying visualize, what you desire to achieve in life. Then feel yourself as having already achieved it. However, this degree of passivity, meaning this level of relaxation, getting into bed, putting up the covers, level your head level with the rest of your body, Goddard goes on to say, this degree of passivity is not essential to the realization of your prayers. All that's really necessary is to create a passive state and feel the wish fulfilled. This is good news because when we want to manifest something, when we want to put frequency or energy to our wishes, we don't have to be near a recliner. We don't have to be near a bed. We can step outside of our cubicle, go outside in the sunshine, sit on a bench in a quiet moment, and we can get into sats. We don't have to be at that level of hypnagogia, at that level of relaxation. You can manifest anytime and anywhere. All you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. And he's told us before, the only reason you don't see it is because you don't believe it. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. As the end is accepted, you become totally indifferent as to possible failure, for acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. Let me say this again. As the end is accepted, and the end means as you arrive at your destination, no more steps to go. We've manifested the love of our life. We've manifested the prosperity or the wellness. That's what the end is. As the end is accepted, as the wish fulfilled, you become totally indifferent to failing. For acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. It's all that is required. When you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is as though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how the end was achieved. However, having witnessed the end, regardless of any anticlimactic sequence, you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly defined. Amen? It's as if you walk into the end of a play, you see how it all wraps up and you can feel confident in that. You don't need to know about the scenes before that. You rest assured in the energy of the end because that is what creates the end in the first place. Thus ends chapter three, prayer. Quote, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Get into the spirit of the state you desire by assuming the feeling that would be yours were you already the one that you want to be. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be successful? Then get into the spirit of that. Go outside every day and be a successful person. Vibrate that way. Have the frequency of that. Be generous. Be charitable. Be kind. All the things you think successful people are, be that now. And the success comes to you. Get into the spirit of what it is you want to create for yourself. As you capture the feeling of the state sought, you are relieved of all effort to make it so, for it is already so. As you capture the feeling of the state sought, you are relieved of all effort or need to work to make it so, because it's already so. It always has been, Glenda the Good Witch. There is a definite feeling associated with every idea in the mind of man. 
Capture the feeling associated with your realized wish by assuming the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of the thing that you desire. And your wish will objectify itself, become an object, become a concrete fact in your reality. Faith, Neville says, is feeling. Quote, according to your faith, be it unto you. Let's switch that up just a little bit. According to your feeling, be it unto you. How are you feeling tonight? Pay attention to that. You never attract that which you want, but you always attract that which you are. As a man is, so does he see. As your interior, your interior world is, so do you see the outpicturing of that. If what you're seeing in your reality, my friends, is not what you want, if what reality is showing you is that you're not prosperous, that you're not well, that you're not loved, that you're not worthy, that you can never be that successful, that you are a failure, change who you are inside. Change who you know yourself to be. I am that I am is what I am. As a man is, so does he see. Everything is just you pushed out. Quote, To him that hath, it shall be given, and to him that hath not, it shall be taken away. Sounds pretty unfair, doesn't it? To him that already has, more is given, while to him that doesn't have, we've got to take it away. Why? That's not fair. Well, we're not talking about actual material things or money. We're talking about what lives within us. To him that has, to him that knows, to him that believes and feels, to him that is in alignment with the true self, more is given, but to him or her that hath not. You do not know who you are. You're not paying attention to your frequency. Your beliefs are off kilter. It'll be taken away. More of the same continues to happen in your life until you wake up to who you are. You are all gods. That's what Jesus said. You're a god. Now act like it. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. So assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish, and your wish has to be realized. Quote, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Next quote, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. So powerful. Let this mind also be in you. Be of this mind. Be of this belief, which was also the belief of Jesus Christ, who came in the form of God. And he didn't think it was robbery to consider himself equal to God. He didn't consider it wrong or blasphemy or heretical to be equal to God. And he said, greater things will you do. You are that which you believe yourself to be. Be like Jesus, equal to God. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Believe. Feel that. And then you create from that. Instead of believing in God or Jesus, Neville says, believe you are God and you are Jesus. Sounds a little heretical, doesn't it? It's not. Quote, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do. We could also reinterpret this as he that believes as I believe, the works that I do shall he also do. Jesus didn't find it strange to do the works of God because he believed himself to be God. I and my Father are one. And when Jesus taught us to pray, first line, our Father who art in heaven, not my Father who art in heaven, like we're a bunch of bastard children, our Father who art in heaven, I and the Father are one. It's natural to do the works of the one you believe yourself to be. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be, and that is what you shall be. It is natural to do the works of the one you believe yourself to be, just as Christ did the works of the one he believed himself to be. Miracles, raising the dead, speaking to spirits, loaves, fishes, water into wine. 
It's natural to do the works of the one you believe yourself to be. So live in the feeling of being the one you want to be, and that is what you shall be. When a man believes in the value of the advice given him and applies it, he establishes within himself the reality of success. This is how Neville closes it. He's saying, when a man believes in the value of the advice given him and applies it, and he just gave us a whole bunch of advice, didn't he? He establishes within himself the reality of success. The reality of success is ours. Thus ends Feeling is the Secret. The purpose of sharing this work with you, Feeling is the Secret, again, a 33-page book with large font that is so powerful, is not just to make more money or to lose that 25 pounds I keep talking about. It's not just about having things or ascending in stature, status, success. It's about connecting you to the reality that this power has been inside you all along. You decided to come here to this crazy planet with this massive, sticky illusion of disconnectedness and separateness, knowing exactly who you are. You knew you'd get here. And because of the sticky nature of this reality, you'd soon forget a lot of what you knew innately about yourself. You knew that, that was the risk. And so many of us get waylaid, don't we? And we, listening, we listen to the programming of this world. We listen to the programming of what the senses tell us is true. And we get stuck and we spiral out and we end up in ditches, but it's never too late to get on the path to righteousness. Righteousness is not about religion. Righteousness is not about a code of conduct. It's about aligning to the innate power within you that's been there all along. If you don't like the conditions of your life right now, something's going on inside of you. Where's it at? What's the belief that's telling you that you deserve this? You'll notice that life is, is pretty patterned. If we refuse to learn a lesson, life or the universe or the subconscious will just send another opportunity to us to learn that lesson. It's dressed up in different people, same energy, same pattern. It's dressed up in different seasons, but same season as last year, same conditions or similar conditions. And we can get reactive to that, meaning we can overly identify with the conditions or what the senses are showing us, what that season is showing us. And we can say, that's my reality. Or we can use that as a reality check. Oh, get back into alignment. I'm seeing this dissonance in my life. I'm experiencing this conflict in my life. Or I'm experiencing this condition that I do not actually want. My thinking man aspect does not want this. I need to get back inside. The kingdom of heaven is within me. And so we stop. Today we stop. Blaming other people for the way our life is. That's victimhood. And we are not victims. Christ was not a victim. Today we stop judging our worth by the metrics of a lower dimensional, third dimensional reality when the truth is we exist outside of this reality. We're just journeying here. We came on an adventure and we brought everything we need to stay connected to ourselves and to our home. We are not this place. We are not these conditions. We are so much more than that. And the truth of that is what sets you free. It's not all the knowledge. It's not all the learning. It's the truth of that. And can you feel the truth of that? I hope you can. When I say to you, that you have the power right now to have all these things that you want, that you've had it all along. The only reason that you don't have it now is because you haven't believed it until now. How does that land with you? Does that feel true to you? Because the spirit always rises. It always ascends to the vibration and frequency of what is true because that comes from creator energy. That's your soul signaling to you, hey, wake up. This is the way. Let's get back on the path. Let's get out of that ditch. 
I like to ask whether somebody feels it because so many of us allow our thinking and our logic and our reasoning to get in the way. And we talk ourselves out of blessings every day. We talk ourselves back from things we're trying to manifest by doubting ourselves or falling back into patterns of misidentification, languaging that exists within us, telling us we are not the I am. We fall out of alignment. But when I say, can you feel that? That's your spirit rising to the truth of that, which it always will. And if you can feel that, you can trust that. And if you feel that stirring in your spirit, when I talk about your divine nature, embrace that and just say, yes, I I receive that. I am divine. Will you say that with me? I am divine. I am whole. I am healthy. I am beautiful. I am loved and I am loving. I have a purpose in my life. I am prosperous. I have all that I want and all that I need and all of it comes to me in divine order. I am an instrument of peace. Say that because it's true. That's who we are. To learn more about me, the services I offer, and also my online spiritual community, please visit me at crystalancompton.com. See you there.